All right, last page of our notes. We're going to look at the absolute value function and write it as a piecewise function. As a piecewise function, it looks like this. Let's talk a little bit about why that is. If we look at that absolute value function, like we talked about, or like you were asked to do in the starter, it follows the line y equals negative x until you get to x equals 0. So for x values that are less than 0, it follows the line y equals negative x. Then at x equals 0, it turns and follows the line y equals x. So we'll follow that if x is greater than or equal to 0. And that's where this piecewise function comes from. Right? We can similarly do the same thing for other absolute value functions, but the change for these guys, the switch is when x minus h equals 0. So if x minus h is less than 0, in other words, if x is less than h, you are going to have to take the negative of what's inside the absolute value to turn it into a positive. Um, but if what's inside the absolute value is already 0 or more, then the absolute value doesn't do anything. We can just get rid of it. But again, if x minus h is less than 0, so if it's x minus h is negative, you have to do the opposite of that to turn it into a positive. So we're going to, instead of doing example 5, we're going to do this example right here. Practice with writing uh, an absolute value function as a piecewise function. So what we're going to do is we're going to do this. If x plus 3 is less than 0, we're going to have the equation 2 times if x plus 3 is less than 0, to turn it into a positive, we have to do the opposite of x plus 3. Now we're going to simplify that. So we're going to start on the inside, distribute the negative. Now we're going to distribute 2. Now we're going to combine like terms. So there's half of the function. That's the half where x is less than negative 3. Now let's do the other half. So if x plus 3 is greater than or equal to 0, so if what's inside the absolute value is already 0 or more, it's like the absolute value isn't doing anything, or it doesn't have to do anything, right? So the absolute value is just going to be x plus 3. So we distribute the 2, combine like terms, we have 2x plus 5. And that's what will happen if x plus 3 or is greater than or equal to 0, which transforms to x is greater than or equal to negative 3. So we're going to finish it up by writing out our piecewise definition. g of x equals, it's going to be two pieces, negative 2x minus 7 if x is less than negative 3 and 2x plus 5 if x is greater than or equal to negative 3 and that's how we do piecewise definitions for absolute value functions.